A lot of people seem to get confused by this, so I'm going to do a video all about different types of gas mask filters or respirator filters and what exactly they do. So firstly, I'm sure all of you have heard of NBC or CBRN filters, that's nuclear biological chemical or chemical biological radiological nuclear, and they're the military filters. But not all of them are the same, and this is the problem. It's the reason I don't particularly like to use the term NBC filters anymore, since my understanding of filters has got a bit better. Because most NBC filters are obviously designed to stop nuclear radiation getting into the mask in the form of alpha radiation, biological uh, weapons which are stopped by the particulate filter, and the chemical weapons are stopped by partly the particulate filter, but mostly the activated carbon inside which is then impregnated with other materials to make it work against more chemical types. The problem is, NBC filters can offer different levels of protection, but there's no way of knowing that unless you know about every individual filter. So it's why I don't like looking at them in that sense. And CBRN I think is pretty much the same, although modern CBRN filters seem to offer ammonia protection. One of the issues with a lot of NBC filters is that Say you have an S10 NBC filter, a GP5 NBC, uh, NBC filter, let's say an M40's um, C2 or C2A1 NBC filter, an Israeli M80 filter, you know, all of those different filters might offer you more or less protection, which is why I don't like using the term NBC. It's, uh, I think the actual ABEC kind of um, style industrial system works a lot better because the letters that the filter has on it tell you what the protection it offers are. So anyway, let's start beginning. First we're going to look at particulate filters which are the most simple. Now I haven't done a video on this yet but I will. I got this 3M mask the other day that's quite good. It is a 3M 7502 so 7500 series um, and it's got at the moment just light little particulate filters on so let's disattach one of those. There we go. So this is just a particulate filter and you'll see on there it says P3 somewhere. Yep, there, P3. So that means it's particulate level 3 protection and with particulate filters you get P1, P2, P3. P3 is the best of the ones. With all of these things, the higher the number the better when it comes to filters. It means that they work if there's more of a contaminant in the air, they work more efficiently and the smaller the contaminant they stop it. So P1 compared to P3, P3 can stop smaller particles in higher concentrations. If you're buying any filter and you have similar priced options, always go for the better protective one. But for particulates, always go for P3. Simply because there's a surprisingly large amount of stuff that P1 will not block. And there's a couple of things that P2 can't block that P3 can, which you really think for the extra one or two pounds it takes to get a P3 filter, just get the P3. Um, but an actual particulate filter looks like that. Now hopefully that's visible on the camera, but it's just kind of paper or fiberglass or anything else that's made in a certain kind of ridge pattern which blocks basically particles getting through. Now P3 is very good because it can block asbestos and um, like microscopic type sort of dust particles. So just put this back on the mask. The free M ones have a bayonet filter which is quite good although I prefer 40mm screw. So that's your P protection, it's particulates, it's very straightforward P for particulate and level 1 to 3 protection, level 3 being the best, so that makes sense. Now we have industrial type markings and this is an ABE filter, I thought it was an ABEC but I checked it carefully and it's actually not. So you can see here if I get it in frame that it says ABE two so that's a protection two b protection two e protection one no k protection but p3 so particulate level three so what are each of these things so a is organic gases uh, or organic vapors and that's lots and lots of in normal industrial kind of things things like paint stripper petrol fumes most, if you fart, that would be an organic vapor um, most things that you look at are classified as organic vapors in normal kind of industrial terms. Not when it comes to chemical weapons, but when it comes to, you know, any sort of industrial thing that gives off a strong odour, 
and could make you nauseous or you know black out anything like that. That's normally A, so organic vapors. Then you have B, that is inorganic vapors, and that's where chlorine and lots of World War One chemicals came in. So I'm not a scientist, I can't tell you how inorganic varies from organic. I guess they're synthesized in a different way. And obviously some filters offer A protection, not B protection. Nearly every CBRN and NBC filter will give you A and B protection because obviously most chemical weapons of World War One were in the B category. So then we have C, and C is acid gases. So that's pretty straightforward. Any sort of gas that's acidic that could damage you from inhaling it because it basically dissolves your skin, reacts with your skin or whatever, those are C. Now, what this filter doesn't do is I said it's not full ABEC, so it's missing the K. It goes A, B, E, K. And what K is is ammonia. And that's what I was saying the problem is lots of military NBC filters don't give you ammonia protection, which is really stupid in my opinion. Because I think what some nations used to do, maybe it was going back 20, 30 years ago, harder to make filters that had ammonia protection in them. They did separate ammonia filters, and they did sort of the filters that did everything. So sometimes you could be issued two sets of filters. You had your NBC filter you put on for everything. But if the ammonia was used, you'd have to have your chemical testing paper out. No ammonia was being used, and then switch to the ammonia filter, um, which obviously isn't practical. And the big problem is, if the enemy shelled you with both ammonia and other chemical weapons at once, you were dead because you could only have one filter on, and um, whichever one you chose, gas would get through the filter. So, that's what I'm saying. That's why you really need to, if you're going to go down the industrial route, get an ABEC filter, ABEC P3 filter, because then you're pretty much stopping every known chemical agent, apart from ones you can't really stop. Because, for example, you get filters that have carbon monoxide protection, but if you read them, it's basically low levels of carbon monoxide. If it, you're in an enclosed space, you're still going to need an air supply and respirator on. So, um, As I've said before, if you want full protection, you always have to go for an air supply and respirator and not um, you know, like a little filter like this with um, an air purifying respirator as in a gas mask. Um, but yeah, let's say modern CBRN filters, I've got the sealed Avon one. I looked up Avon FM12 filters. And interestingly enough, Avon FM12 filters stop ammonia as well, so they give you full ABEC protection. I think it said it was something like A2, B2, and then E1, or K1. It might have even been A1, but it was definitely B2. And as I was saying, it's because B is inorganic gases such as chlorine. Most NBC filters are designed so if chlorine is used, they give you a bit better protection. Uh, as I was saying, 2 is better than a 1, but in a lot of filters you'll find they're either 1 or 2 often mixed, I guess due to pricing and size of the filter. Um, you'll notice if you look for filters online, when you look at industrial ABEC filters, the more things they stop, so for example an AB filter is relatively small, an ABE filter gets a bit bigger, an ABK filter gets bigger again, it's generally because they have a different layer in them for each of the, the um, sort of filter mediums. So an ABEC P3 filter, if you get a full industrial one, can actually be quite chunky, even though this is actually an ABEC P3 filter and relatively small. I'm guessing it's yeah, like the exact same size as another 40 mm filter. It's um, you know the industrial ones tend to get quite large, but then they'd last longer as well. On Amazon for about 20 pounds, I think you can buy Scott uh, ABEC P3 filters, which are more like industrial type ones that look like they'd actually work better with a hose rather than being like this big chunky filter on a mask, but. Very interesting. I've also seen, but um, I'm going to hold off buying one for now, but I might get one at some point. You can get sealed Avon filters from, I think it was a seller on Amazon, but there was postage charges. It was like some prepping place, but they had photos and they said all the filters are dated until 2023, 2024. They're sealed in like plastic cases with the filter inside that plastic case. Um, and they said on there that, you know, which I've said before, but there's a bit of debate about exactly where because filters last indefinitely you can buy one that runs out in about seven years time and then expect it to last longer than that you know at least five years maybe but nobody really knows as I said filters do not have an infinite life span but they do last longer than the dates on them but as it's indefinite that does not mean infinite it means that once you get beyond that date it's uncertain if they will work or not they will last longer, but how much longer nobody knows. And I think with ABEC filters, they start to lose some of their protective ability. So it might still have the AB protection after 20 plus years of being sealed. 
but the E and K protection might have worn off. I don't know. Um, simple answer is nobody knows. That's why you use a filter that's in date and not out of date. So, as said, you have P123, always get a P3. Most NBC filters and CBRN filters are always P3. Then you get A, B, E, and K, or ABEC as the industrial thing. Um, and ABEC, you always want to go for ABEC really because you don't know what's going to be used. And if ammonia leaks at the same time as other gases, you're screwed if you've got one that doesn't offer ABEC protection. So always go for ABEC with a P3 on it. Um, the good thing you can do is if you're interested in buying some sort of military NBC filter, for the newer type of filters, you can normally go on the website of the companies that make them and they normally have a PDF you can download and if you look at the Adobe file, you can generally get a full write-up of what is stopped. Some of them actually have like a massive chart where they tick off the gases their filters stop so obviously you can then find out exactly what the filter does. But as said, I would always personally go for an ABEC P3 style filter rather than the NBC CBRN ideally because they tell you on the side of the filter what it does with its lettering system. When you have military NBC filters, it's a bit sketchy how good the protection can be on some of them. So that's why um, I would ideally say, you know, go for either an ABEC P3 filter for all practical uses for a civilian. There are more gases, but your chances of encountering them and surviving them are so low that I'd... Um, not really recommend wasting loads of money on filters that cost even more that block those agents or get sealed new CBRN NBC filters where you can find out exactly what the filter stops but as I said something like a GP5 filter when it was new it probably didn't offer ammonia protection because most military NBC filters in the 70s didn't seem to do that so yeah I think I've said enough about this over and over in this video but Get an ABEC P3 filter or a CBRN filter that tells you exactly what it stops.